one pick since 2000. As high as Hall of Fame and as low as a bust. Let's begin. 2000. The Cleveland Browns select Courtney Brown. The Browns had the worst defense in the league, and they took a chance on Courtney Brown, the best college defender in the world. His rookie season, he had four and a half sacks. It looked like the Browns made the right choice, and Courtney Brown would soon be an NFL star. But what happened? Injuries. Courtney Brown hurt his ankle, then he hurt his knee. He finally returned two years later, only to hurt his foot right away. In 2004, the Browns decided to release their former number one overall pick. He was given a second chance by the Broncos in 2007. He never fully recovered from his injuries, and his NFL career was over. Courtney Brown was a disappointment. 2001. The Atlanta Falcons select Michael Vick. Michael Vick was must-watch TV in the early 2000s. He was the fastest quarterback in NFL history, and he put on a show, creating some of the craziest highlights in NFL history. He was having a Hall of Fame career. Michael Vick turned the Falcons into a winning franchise. As a rookie, he made the Pro Bowl and was fourth in MVP voting. Two years Years later, he took the Falcons to the NFC Championship and was second in the MVP voting. It seemed like nothing could stop Michael Vick, but something did. In 2007, Vick was caught having dogs fight each other, so he missed two years of football in his prime. When Michael Vick finally returned from jail, he signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. This was his second chance. He had one great season, but but then the injuries came. Michael Vick never played a healthy season again, and after bouncing around a few more teams, he finally retired. If Michael Vick stayed healthy, he would have been a Hall of Famer, but instead, he is a possible Hall of Famer. 2002. The Houston Texans select David Carr. This is the Houston Texans' first season in the NFL, as the league just added an extra team. And what does a new team need? A franchise quarterback. But David Carr was not who they thought he was. In his rookie season, the only stat worth talking about is how David Carr got sacked 76 times. It's a miracle he's still alive after all those sacks. Carr played five seasons for the Texans, having a losing record every year, and he threw more interceptions than touchdowns. That is embarrassingly bad. After being released by the Texans, both the Panthers and Giants gave Carr a second chance, but they both realized the same thing that the Texans realized, that David Carr was an absolute bust. 2003. The Cincinnati Bengals select Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer was not your average number one pick. He was in the College Hall of Fame and expected to be an NFL superstar. His first season was shaky, but in his second season, he made the Pro Bowl had the highest completion percentage in the NFL and most importantly took the Bengals to the playoffs. With 32 touchdowns and only 12 interceptions, it looked like the Bengals finally found their quarterback. But something weird happened. Carson Palmer went backwards. After one good season, Palmer went eight years without getting another Pro Bowl. The Bengals were losing games and sick of Carson Palmer. Palmer being average, so they traded him to the Oakland Raiders. After two seasons, the Raiders realized Palmer wasn't good, and they released him. But then the craziest thing happened. Carson Palmer joined the Arizona Cardinals, and at the age of 36, he had the best season of his career. He threw 35 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions, and finished number two in the MVP voting. The Cardinals won 13 games that season. Palmer played two more great years and then he retired. What a weird career. His best seasons were in the very beginning and at the very end. Carson Palmer was pretty good. 2004. The San Diego Chargers select Eli Manning. Even though it was the Chargers who drafted him, Eli said he would not play for the Chargers. So they were forced to trade him to 
to the New York Giants. And history began. After a rocky first four years, where Eli threw as many interceptions as touchdowns, he finally found momentum in 2008. With a historic season, he led the Giants to a 10-6 record. But where Eli really found his magic was in the playoffs. The Giants shocked everyone and made it to the Super Bowl. And they were up against the perfect Patriots. The Patriots went 16-0 in the regular season. They were 2-0 in the playoffs. And they were only one game away from having the first perfect season in NFL history. All they needed was a Super Bowl win. But Eli Manning played the game of his life, beat the Patriots, and won his first Super Bowl. From this moment, Eli Manning became a franchise quarterback for the Giants. He made four more Pro Bowls, but most importantly, took the Giants to another Super Bowl in 2012. Once again, against the Patriots. Every time Eli Manning was facing Tom Brady, he would play insane. As once again, the Giants shocked the Patriots. Eli Manning single-handedly stole two Super Bowls from Tom Brady. If Eli played every game like it was a Super Bowl, he would easily be a Hall of Famer. But because he played worse in the regular season, he's only a possible Hall of Famer. 2005! But before 2005, guys, I am so excited to see my Giants play when the season starts. I'm a huge Giants fan, and it's always fun going to the game. And I always get the best tickets for cheap, because I use SeatGeek, who I'm really happy to have as today's sponsor. They are literally the best app for getting tickets. I went to the Yankees game last week, and I got insanely good tickets for cheap. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including every sport, concerts, and more. I'm looking at Yankee tickets right now, and they're literally $4. With the NBA and NHL playoffs going on, the MLB season, and the NFL season coming up, you don't want to miss out. Also, Drake is on tour, along with a bunch of other artists. Each ticket is based on a 1 to 10 scale. So look for the green dots. Green means it's a good deal, red means bad. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code LNU for $20 off at Seeky. That's $20 off your first purchase with the promo code LNU. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Sponsors really help me to make better and better videos. So if you guys could give SeatGeek a shot, I would really appreciate it. The San Francisco 49ers select Alex Smith. Alex Smith has the most interesting career so far in this video. In his rookie season, he threw one touchdown and 11 interceptions. That shouldn't even be possible. But the 49ers didn't give up on Alex. Alex Smith played five years of average football. And then something changed. All of a sudden, he started to play like a star. In 2011, the 49ers went 13 and 3, and Alex Smith led them to the NFC Championship, and he made the Pro Bowl. Now it's 2012, and Alex Smith is a free agent. The 49ers have a decision. Do we stick with Alex Smith, or do we go for Peyton Manning, who just announced he's leaving the Colts? This was the moment of truth. Do the 49ers trust Alex Smith? And in a huge shock, they did. Instead of Peyton Manning, the 49ers re-signed Alex Smith and they also signed Randy Moss, giving Alex a great weapon at wide receiver. The 2012 season is going incredible. Alex Smith, Randy Moss, everybody's doing amazing. Until Alex gets a concussion and the craziest thing happens. When he got healthy from the concussion, the 49ers changed their mind. They decided to move on from Alex Smith. Out of nowhere, they traded Alex Smith to the Chiefs. A huge mistake. Alex Smith made three Pro Bowls with the Chiefs, made them a winning franchise, and most importantly, he paved the way for Patrick Mahomes to one day take his spot. When Mahomes did take his spot, Alex was traded to Washington. Then he had one of the worst injuries in NFL history, breaking his leg in two different 
places. He miraculously came back for one more season in Washington, one comeback player of the year, and then retired on top. Alex Smith may not have been the best quarterback, but against all odds, he always found a way to come back from whatever problems he had. He was pretty good, but he has a Hall of Fame level of respect from me. 2006. The Houston Texans select Mario Williams. The Texans still had David Carr at quarterback, and they picked one of the best defensive players of our generation. Mario Williams had seasons with 13 and a half sacks, 14 sacks, and 14 and a half sacks. He was always in the defensive player of the year conversation and was feared by the top quarterbacks. In 10 seasons, Mario Williams had 98 sacks. Even though his career was only 10 years long, Mario Williams is a possible Hall of Famer. 2007. The Oakland Raiders select Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell had the shortest career of everyone in this video. Some players, it took time to realize they were bad. But Jamarcus Russell wasted no time in showing how horrible he was at football. The Raiders drafted him because of his throwing power. Jamarcus Russell in college could throw the ball farther than any quarterback in the NFL. With a cannon of an arm, standing 6'6 and 245 pounds, Jamarcus Russell had the build of a perfect quarterback. With proper training and coaching, he could have been a franchise quarterback. But here's the thing that ruined his career, which most people don't know about. The Raiders coaches and scouts did not like Jamarcus Russell. They wanted somebody else at number one. But the Raiders owner, Al Davis, forced them to pick Jamarcus. Because the coaches didn't like Jamarcus, they didn't even try to make Jamarcus a good player. They left him on his own, which is so unfair for a rookie quarterback. He played three awful seasons before being released by the Raiders, and no other NFL team gave him a chance. Jamarcus Russell was an absolute bust, but I blame the Raiders coaches more than I blame him. 2008. Miami Dolphins select Jake Long, senior. An offensive lineman going number one? He better be Superman. Matt Ryan was the best player in the draft, but the Dolphins already had a quarterback, Chad Pennington, who was pretty good. So instead of a new quarterback, they wanted someone to protect Chad Pennington. And Jake Long did exactly that. In his first four years with the Dolphins, he made four Pro Bowls. He was the best left tackle in the NFL, and he should be a Hall of Famer. The issue is, his career was only nine years long, which is super short for an offensive lineman. They usually play until they're 40. Jake Long is a possible Hall of Famer. 2009. The Detroit Lions select Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford was the face of the Detroit Lions for 11 years. Even though the rest of the team was doo-doo, the two players who made them fun to watch was Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson, his number one receiver. Even though the Lions always lost, Stafford would put up great numbers every year. When he finally got moved to a good team, the Rams, he literally won a Super Bowl his first year with them. Matthew Stafford would throw for 5,000 yards every season before it was normal, before guys like Patrick Mahomes would do that. Matthew Stafford is a Hall of Famer.